Hello everyone, this is part of a problem solving series that will help you prepare for math competitions. Those competitions would include AMC 10 and 12, the American Invitational Mathematics Examination, the AMI, and other contests and tournaments organized by various universities. In this session, we will be solving an algebra problem for, from the American Regional Mathematics League competition, the ARML. And here's a view of the problem. We would like to compute the number of ordered pairs AB. And we know that A and B are integers uh, from 2 to 50 inclusive. And B is also from 2 to 50 inclusive. And we want logarithm A in base B to be a rational number. So we should first start by writing this condition in a logical way. So the best way probably would be to write this as logarithm a in base b equals a rational. So let's call it p over q where p and q are integers. So what we can do here is multiply this by logarithm c in with base c. Am I allowed to do that? Of course I am, because logarithm c in base c is simply equal to 1. And therefore, I can go ahead and uh, rewrite finally this expression as logarithm um, in base c to the power q uh, of c to the power p. Now, here I've made use of a very well-known fact that the numerator of our coefficient here will become the exponent of the c here. And the denominator of our coefficient will become the exponent of the base here. And boom. So I really have now something amazing. So this immediately implies that our ordered pair AB should be of the form C to the power P and C to the power Q where p and q are integers. Recall that a and b huh, are numbers from the set 2, 3, and so on, all the way to 50. And now we, we basically have a simple case work that we can uh, start with um, c being 2, I guess, because c being 1 would be impossible because we are not allowed to pick a and b as 1. So let's go ahead and count in each potential value of c, how many uh, p's and q's can be chosen. Each one will define a and b uniquely. So when c is equal to 2, um, p and uh, q can be chosen from uh, the set um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, any power up to 5 would be less than 50. If I pick 6, 6 would be uh, impossible because 2 to the power 6 is 64. Okay, so therefore all these are possible choices for P and Q. So in the case C is equal to 2, this implies we have uh, 5 different choices for P, which defines A in 5 different ways, and 5 different choices for Q. Again, the choice selection of Q will automatically define the B. In total, we have 25 count here. When C is equal to 3, P and Q can be 1, 2, or 3. 3 to the power 3 is simply 27. 3 to the power 4 is 81, which exceeds our upper bound of 50. And from here, we have we can choose Q, P in three different ways, Q in three different ways for a total of 9. When c is equal to, we, have, we already used the 4, 5, I should say, I guess. p and q can be chosen from the set 1 and 2. And so in two different ways, they can be the same. c is equal to 6. We have not done 6 yet. So um, again, we can have 1 or 2 here, two different ways for a total of 4. c can be 7. And the base here can be 7. Then P and Q can be 1 and 2 again. Um, I guess two different ways. For all the other possibilities for C, we basically have only one option left. So for all the other cases, P and Q have to be 1. In that sense, for any other base here, uh, we should have 
a and b equal basically right so so we can write that down actually so therefore a is actually equal to b in this case in this very last case so far we have used 5 plus 3 is 8 plus 6 is 14 we had originally 49 numbers here so for 49 minus 14 so we should have 35 remaining count so when we add all these we get 25 plus 9 is 34 plus 4 is 38 42 46 plus 35 we should get 81 and that's our answer to this problem so that finishes the solution of our problem see you all in our next session